and here we are. We are mother freaking live on another Gutter Fighting Secrets Tactical Podcast. Now you guys asked for it and I have delivered. I've got Warren here with the 52 block system. A lot of you guys came to me privately one-on-one and said, Will, why can't you get 52 blocks guys on here? Well, here we are. We've got one. Warren has come on, agreed to come on, and said that he talked to us not only about 52 blocks, but about combatives in general. So, Warren, bro, thanks for coming on. Hey, what's up, man? So, and now you and I have been going back and forth a little bit, just bullshitting on our own about this and that. Um, you're a funny freaking guy, man. I'm always like, I always get a smile on my face when I yeah, hear you talk man. about shit, dude. Um, so you keep a sense of humor when you're doing this shit, man. Like you can't always be just kill, kill all the time, man. It's mostly <laughs> people that ain't been in fights to do their goofy shit, man. So yeah. you know. No, a hundred percent, dude. It's it's the type of thing where and then plus, you know, you've got the guys out there who they're all are serious all the time, like Green Berets. I always interview Green Berets, and they've all got a fucking stick up their ass about shit, man. And it's <laughs> no fun to sit down and talk with them about it because they just want to advertise their business. But, you know, with you, it's like you want to you shoot the shit. So, first of yeah. all, bro, um, I appreciate that. Now, let's get – how did you learn 52 blocks, man? Um, let's start from the beginning and, and work our way here. Uh, the beginning, like I had seen, I had seen shit on the internet probably early as like 2008, 2009. Didn't really, you know, didn't really didn't know where to learn it. Was already doing like boxing, Muay Thai, had a wrestling background, all that. So fast forward to 2016. You know, I actually, I, I got jumped. I got my ass whooped. I'm not gonna lie. I got fucked up. In the middle of downtown Atlanta, you know, about two, three weeks after that, you know what I'm saying, 4th of July came up. So I get on the phone and start talking shit about, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I'm going to fuck everybody up in the city, this and that. Group text, you know what I mean? And this was 4th of July, election year type shit. Uh, Somebody in the text sent it to the police. It went from one thing to another, got a, a charge for that. I was on a probation at the time. Didn't even know I was on that shit. So I'm thinking I'm fucking bombing out, going home, you know. Turned out the shit was, it was on the news, this and that, violated probation. Went to Gwinnett County. Again, the cell with my own boy. They call him BC out here. His real name, Antoine Harris. It's a, a real person. It's not no fucking fantasy boogeyman. So I'm, you know, doing my little Muay Thai shit, doing push ups, or fucking. Going elbows, I see him do something that looked like the shit I've seen on the internet. You know, he, he probably thought I was trying to intimidate him, whatever. So he showed me some some violent shit. This is a big dude. So I was like, all right, I'm going to learn this. So he showed me shit for about five, six months. I got out probably end of, end of 2016 type shit. 2017, did mostly fitness other martial arts, same up until about, what was that, beginning of 2019. I guess it was a seminar down here. Like, Light Burley had had a seminar. A few people that went to that, they reached out to me for this shit called 52 Blocks ATL. You know, that's when I started learning more of the New York type of style. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, we had a fallout. I was training with one of the other students, Jewel ATL Burley. He taught me that AOD style. And so the AOD is like the art of defense. That's the that's the one of the top ones. That's the one that works. Mm-hmm. Like Burley, Diallo Frazier. Then you got that jailhouse style. I'll call mine renegade because I'm kind of doing my own thing, but it takes bits and pieces from other styles and then just from shit that I've done, been around, whatever, is it's more realistic, man. Yeah, so, yeah. That's, that's interesting, bro, is that you actually have taken a bunch of these different 52 block styles. You mentioned the New York style, which is what I'm familiar with. You mentioned the ATL style, the Atlanta style. Um, and then you mentioned that you are actually kind of honing your own system of yeah. 52 blocks. So can you tell us a little bit about, a little bit more about, um, I guess, 
that's going to kind of come from your Muay Thai wrestling, boxing background? Yeah, it's that. And then, like, it's certain blocks in 52 that they, they're in every type of martial art, they're in every type of sport. Like, if you watch on um, BKFC, you know, that bare knuckle shit, you see them doing this a lot. You know, that that's one of the main things, same weight distribution they do in 52. Same with, uh, they call it the skull and crossbones block. You see, you see right. this a lot in like UFC, fucking um, what Krav Maga has versions of it, where they'll come in and, and crash. So you know, it, it's a real system, man. The, the thing where people, shit, I joke on it, man. I used to fucking do it, bro. Like the thing that turns people off of it is the, the slap boxing part, man. Like you're not gonna catch nobody punches and do a a fucking breakdancing move. It's, just, it's, <laughs> it's not going to happen, you know? No, no, it won't. And, uh, you know, a lot of people train in systems like that um, where it's like, whether it's Wing Chun or another system yeah. where you're doing a lot of the flashy hand stuff. And it can work, don't get me wrong, but generally nine times out of ten, especially if you're fighting a guy like you or me who box, uh, you're just going to get your ass whooped. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Any, any wrestler, any boxer, and uh, shit, the way I look at it is like this, man. You got the Asian martial arts where, say, like TKD karate, you might learn a fucking a 540 spinning jump back kick, whatever the fuck. You know, it, it's martial arts. So, yeah, that's the art side of it. You know, it, they, they got bullshit stories, too. And then, hell, some of the high kicks was to kick people off of a horse, man. Like, right. Right. We're, damn, we're damn near in spaceships now. Is it? Nobody's <laughs> kicking nobody off the fucking horse. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, I mean, that's a great point, too, is, you know, like you said, my, you know, I, uh, I learned a street style from New York um, called DAS, Deadly Art of Survival. When this was like, when I first got, in, got into combatives, um, my instructor it was kind of familiar. Yeah, yeah you might. Like the guided chaos days. Yeah, so this was totally different from Guide to Chaos. This was um, from the projects in New York City. My instructor was Garnett Stroger. He was, uh, I'm going to be careful what I say here, but I know that the Crips really liked, like certain certain members of the Crips really liked this system and that type of thing um, down in kind of Midtown Man Manhattan projects and all of that, and or Lower East Side of Manhattan, I should say. Um and it was, uh, it was very similar, I think, to 52 Blocks. I think there was a lot of influence there. But it sounds to me a lot like your system, where it was very boxing heavy, kind of grappling oriented, but more so, you know, um, just double jab your way in and then grab him and, and throw him that type of thing. Now, yeah, I, mean, um, I got into saying that I actually forgot what the hell my point was when I brought that up, but I really want to um, bring it back for just a second here for guys who may be watching here and saying, what the fuck is 52 blocks? Like we should, we should give them a solid definition Warren of what this system is. Um, I mean, it's basically close quarters, blocks, feints, and the way to put it together most effectively. Like you can use certain defense as an offense. So like I'll show certain stuff that just looks like a block. It's also a strike. You know what I mean? You can also you can get in grappling range with all of it. A little bit of it is based on leverage points. And then how you bought up the DS sys BAS system, it damn well could be 52, man. Like, it's a yeah. lot of different places. They call it a different name, man. Like down in yeah. Georgia, the shit, like, it's called Alto Shuffle, huh. you know? Some people will say Alto 52. It come from guys that's a little bit older than me, like probably like early 40s to I'd say about the 60s. There used to be this uh this juvenile prison called Alto. And I guess they had people from New York that, you know, blended styles or did did something to come up with that style. So yeah, you you could be out in the middle of nowhere and somebody might have some shit called this. <laughs> The bum rush or some shit. And it, it's right. the same thing as 52. It's basically just close quarters. Then you it, it mentioned a gang, like, you know, some of that shit, yeah, it does. It come from from 
crime and stuff like that. But I mean, shit, so did Savat. They yeah, just no, they exactly. took, French pirates, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they just took it to another level, and they weren't arguing on the internet. So it right. might be one yeah. of the real martial art today. Well, what I really like about 52 Blocks is, is the prison system. Um, so it's tried, it's tested. It's, I mean, motherfuckers in prison fight, like for real, yeah. not on the internet, right? So. Yo, that's how I learned was I was in a county jail in a fucking pod for the people that were supposed to go to prison or had serious charges. Yeah. Luckily, I beat the shit. But yeah, dude was like, hey, you might be going down the road. You might want to learn this. So I was like, shit, okay. But yeah, man, I mean, it's like any other, I guess you could say, younger martial art. Like, it took Krav Maga a while for them to get they get they respect. People thought it was some bullshit, thought that, okay, this this, this doesn't work. It's like, all right, it, certain shit you just, you're not going to do in MMA. It doesn't mean it don't work. Right. Right. And I mean, you're a wrestler. You have a wrestling background. So, you know, as well as any MMA fighter about how effective shooting in on somebody and just bring them to the ground is. Yeah. So it's when crazy. a guy like you fight somebody, man, quite honestly, even if they know Krav Maga, like for freaking 10 years, they've been doing Krav Maga. You're going to get in. You're going to shoot on them. You're going to beat the fuck out of them on the ground. Like that's all there is. It's it doesn't crazy. mean it's not effective, though. Yeah, that's, that's all you got to do. Shoot in for a single or a double leg. You know, if they try the little tackle move, you you sprawl. Like, <laughs> it, it's damn near on. Um, I heard this stand-up comedian say this shit one time, man. Like, you know how to fight? It's damn near like being in the Matrix, man. You got some fucking slow, drunk-ass dude going to Haymaker. <laughs> you, you, can damn, you can sit back and just be like, okay, I'm going to counter the shit out of you type shit, man. So, uh, yeah, it's always, it's always good to learn something. Now, if guys want to learn these, this 52 block system, it's, it's tough, it's tough, man, because you gotta, you gotta have the right connections. Um, it's not like there's schools out there like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, where you can just go sign up. Um, yeah. How can I get in touch? Maybe, I think it's maybe one or two gyms out of the, everybody that does it. I think there's one gym in all, uh, Fucking Columbus, Ohio. This dude, uh, Montu Ra, he's got a, he actually just opened it. I guess I could send you the link to that when we're off of the, uh, off the podcast. Okay. Uh, we'll see. The dude, like Burley, he got an online program. And then I'm somewhat doing online and in person stuff. So, you know, anybody in the Atlanta area, I'm definitely down to train, you know, this COVID shit, it's kind of hard to get in the gym anyway, man. Like, I started going back to American Top Team, and it's like, you really can't wear that mask once you get to sweat and shit, so, you know. Yeah, I was trying to wear the mask while I was doing Muay Thai, man, and I just, I can't fucking do it, man. It's just yeah, too can't wear it anywhere but in a in a damn store, man. If you try to do any type of labor, the shit getting caught up in, in a fucking door or whatever, man, like, <laughs> it's stupid. Yeah, no, it is. It is. And, you know, hopefully by hopefully by this time next year in 2022, we'll be rid of this shit, um, or at least most of it. so, man. So, I mean... If guys are in the Atlanta area, they can train with you. Have you, I mean, do you have a YouTube channel yet? Do you have? I got one under Warren C. I'm trying to figure out how to change it to Renegade 52 Blocks. Probably, probably have to go through Google and do that. But shit, you do okay. after the podcast and we'll, we'll get that taken care of. All right. But yeah, um, YouTube. I'll fuck with YouTube because they don't really have that, like, one-minute time limit. Yeah. And then, you you know, like, if somebody was to say something in a comment, you can either delete it or you don't have to engage, man, with, uh, with Instagram and some of these other platforms, bro. You say the wrong shit. Hey, they act like you in elementary school, man. <laughs> it's yeah. funny to me, bro, how... Instagram used to be like the place where you go and it was totally chill. Like you could say, say yeah, what yeah. you want, do what you want. 
and YouTube was the opposite. They were censoring you, but now it's yeah. Instagram censoring you and YouTube's a little bit more free. So Yeah, it's like the reverse, man. Like it used to just be a picture app, you know, take pictures of your food, maybe see a female with her ass out, man. Now it's it's people with their whole life out, man. They'll say yeah. something you disagree with it, and they're like, well, we might erase everything because you're not being PC, man. Everybody's a winner. It's like, nah, dude. Everybody's a winner. <laughs> yeah. <man. laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's, <laughs> that's exactly the mentality that we're dealing with here, bro, is, I mean, that's why guys like you and I and guarantee you all of our audience combined is so ahead of the game to be honest is oh, we're warriors, really cool. martial artists you've got all of these fucking soft motherfuckers out there going around saying how we're all winners um yeah. and then, honestly it makes life better for you and i because we've got kind of our room of the kingdom so to speak yeah pretty much man and and all- I, yeah i really i think that what you're doing with this new 52 block style is it's fucking cool. And um, I am really excited to see where you go with it. Um, I know I've, I've looked at a couple of your things on the Instagram page. Um, I'm really stoked about to see when you get the uh, YouTube channel going a little more and I'll definitely be, um, be, you know, kind of looking and watching as it grows. I really like, like I saw some stuff you were doing with like, um, Checking kicks, like a Muay Thai uh, check almost. Now, is that part of the 52 block system or is that just a Muay Thai thing? It's uh, it's something that I didn't just pick up. And honestly, man, it depends on who you train with because a, a lot of people, they ain't just come in as 52. So, like, they might be a Tai Chi guy. They might, they might fucking know Kimpo, all of that, or um, like some of my footwork came from, you know, like I, I'm not I'm not really cool with a lot of people now, but when I was training with them, like they show me shit that they learned in Taekwondo or whatever. Right. And then um my introduction to combatives was this guy, Rofish. And he was I ain't gonna lie, he was slick on um, when I was in 52 ATL, he was trying to soft recruit people. So he'd come out there. We'd all be doing this shit. Then he, you know, he he come with the snatching and shit. I was like, yo, I mean, I need to learn this. Then you know, I learned like half of his system. Then I started fucking looking more at the internet. Start looking at like Lee Morrison shit like that. Then I seen some of your shit. You was doing something in the backyard and fucking yeah, man. Like that's I got into combatives when I seen it was. It fit me more, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, combatives is is the way to go. I mean, martial arts, like you said, they're arts. They're great to study. Um, my jiu-jitsu um, professor always kind of analyzes it to this, is that you can sit down. If you, let's say you really like Japanese culture and you want to sit down in the kimono and do a tea ceremony and you pour the tea exactly right and all of that tradition, well, that's amazing. That's great. If you love tradition, you want to keep it alive and be a part of Japanese culture. But then don't go out on the streets thinking because you wear a kimono when you do tea ceremonies that you can rock somebody and like be a badass. <laughs> it just isn't the way it works. And I think your no, analogy I, with the martial really. arts is, is perfect. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of that is is ego, too, though, man, because, I mean, I had some videos up. I fucking either buried it or just deleted it. But, yeah, man, you got people that, uh, you know, they didn't live a while and fucking they, they've been doing a bullshit style half of their life. So it's like it's part of their identity. They, they, you can show them, but they're they just going to keep doing it, man. Like it does, some people, it doesn't matter. You know, yeah, yeah. You can't change their mind. They they're set in their ways. So, uh, yeah. but you know, it sounds to me like fifty two blocks. Although it's an established system, it's still growing and it's still collecting. It's still a living art that's adding to it all the time. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a lot of different stuff. I'm coming from an angle where you know I might use a weapon, might 
try to attempt parkour and not fucking kill my phone or myself type of shit. You know, um, but then you got, it's, it's at least two people that are actively doing MMA. You know, you got some people that they work more of the, uh, the capoeira type styles into it. You got, um, you know, you got some people that get super tactical with the shit. You know, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with it because it's like, okay, if you, you got on, you know, your, uh, your plate carrier and all this shit just in real life, like, you're going to be the first one to, to damn get it. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, for the most part, it, it shit could go. It's, it's so many different ways it shit could go. Like, it's, it's still starting, man. I'm just trying to separate it from all of the, uh, you know, the I did 50 years in jail shit, man. Like, that kind of that, that does kind of turn people away when people get into the, the jail prison talk, depending on who it is, you know. Yeah, you know, you're right. It can be intimidating to people. I really do believe that. Um, I mean, for for most guys, I think for most serious combatives guys, it's like, oh shit, like prison stuff. Like I need to learn that. But you know, for your most civilians running around out there, they don't. They get very nervous about. I think you know, and intimidated by prisoners and prison and, and jail talk and all of that. So, yeah. yeah. So what you're doing as far as kind of starting to separate from that taking the lessons that have been learned in the jailhouse, taking the lessons that have been learned on the streets, um, incorporating that into this new 52 block system or offshoot of the system that you're teaching now, uh, but kind of distancing it as well and making it more manageable, making it more applicable for your everyday citizen. I I think that's a great thing. Pretty pretty much, man. Like, Something that I might start doing is like more of a discretion type of thing. Like, remember those uh, choose your own adventure type books, man? Like, it can be the same with a martial art. It's like, all right, you got to this point, you just stop the fight. Like, either you can go all the way through with, like, you know, like gross motor skill, hammer fist, slam somebody head off the fucking ground. It's like, okay, now you got to go to court. You right. know, or, right. or you could just like take one of their senses away, maybe hit somebody in, in the bridge of their nose or their eye or something. You know, something is is not gonna it's not it's not gonna fuck you up, but it's gonna get you out of the area. So that's kind of what I'm coming with is just keeping it basically keeping it like what you would see on CCTV or YouTube or World Star, man. Like, you're not really, you know, the worst shit you'll see is somebody getting soccer kicked in the head. And, I mean, that, that's attempted murder. You don't have to fucking, you don't got to learn that from anybody. It's, it's being angry, man. Like, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. No, and I'm so glad that you bring that up. And it's a guy like you, um, yeah, and I'll just say a guy like me, who's kind of been there and done it and seen, hey, listen, um, there's serious legal trouble out there. And if you fuck somebody up, if you chop someone in the throat or if you soccer kick them in the head, you're going to go to jail, bro. Like you're you're that's all. Yeah, there is. There's cameras everywhere, man. Yeah. I'm on a camera and a microphone. Okay. Right. Yeah. And they're everywhere. Yeah. And so wow. many instructors don't talk about that. They don't even bring it up. And they live in this fantasy yeah. world where they think that you're just going to Jackie Chan people left and right. But a guy like you, you, I like that you're t- talking about that and saying, fucking be careful. You don't need to do all this. Do this. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, that some of that come from security and then just other run-ins. You know, like, for example, I've, I've seen a video where you got, you got a simple move. It's like you're in a grapple. You pull down one arm and you bomb strike like that. That's that's enough to fuck to do serious damage to somebody, yeah. you know. Yeah. So if, somebody, if I did something like that, I would know like when to when to stop. But then you got other people that they'll be like, you gotta bomb strike them and then then pin their arm down and bite them and shit. And it's, it's like you said, man. The, the um. Registered hands is bullshit, but in most states, if they find out that you do a martial art, they definitely going to enhance it or put you somewhere, you know, where you can't be around people type of shit. So, yeah, it's all in how far you want to take it when it comes to actually using it, man. 
Well, that's exactly what I always worry about on Gutter Fighting Secrets, man, is, and you need to as, as well, too, now, is we're all over the fucking internet, man. Um, we know how to fight. Mm-hmm. We, we teach people how to fight. So if we ever got into a confrontation, it would have to be a serious, without a doubt, life defense thing. Otherwise, yeah. we're taking a trip, you know? We're going on vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, if you look like a like, bully type of shit, right, you know? Right. The thing yeah, I didn't find yeah. with thing I done found with martial arts and you might have been doing it longer than me, man. Like, the more I learn, the more humble I get, man. It's yeah. like, life is fucking fragile, dude. We mostly water type shit, man. So, that's yeah, so it's mostly about learning. No, it's so true. And spoken like a true warrior, spoken like a true martial artist is, you know, uh, the more mat time you have, especially in the grappling arts where you, where you actually like physical contact fight a lot. Um, you get humbled every time you go in, like some days you win, but a lot of days you lose. Right. And it's yeah, real. yeah. Yeah. I want to get more in the sparring, man. And hopefully that'll come with time with, you know, trying to phase back in and going to a gym. Yeah. Cause it, it's gotta be a, a safety thing too, man. It was a, a good, couple months last year while I was sparring people at parks and shit. And I mean, it, it's cool, but it's not cool, man. Like, people might not have a mouthpiece. They might have, like, I would come with bag gloves or, like, 16s. Yeah. There was one dude I used to attempt to train, train with him, and he come with the fucking the little skinny gloves. I'm like, yeah. shit, we might as well go bare knuckle there. That's like, what the fuck? It's actually safer to go bare knuckle at that point. Yeah, hell yeah. You're just getting cuts. You're not getting that, that impact over and over to your brain and shit. It just it looks worse. But yeah, man. Yeah, you gotta have the right gear. That's the thing. And that's also, you know, it's it's a fucking investment, man. Like that's why I haven't opened up my own place yet, is it's just such an investment. And then once yeah. all it takes is something like COVID to come and just ruin you. So Yeah, and you get wiped out. Hell yeah. yeah. I didn't thought about it a few times, trying to maybe go in with like three, four people, but that, that shit's like paying rent for somewhere that you don't even live. And then, yeah. Like you said, it just art not really selling right now. So it just take one bad month and you fuck. So I already know, man. Yeah, and that's the way you're doing it right now is the way to do it, I think, is just do it on the side. I know you're working security and whatnot, um, but – you know, that's kind of the way I do it too. When I find somebody who's interested, I'll, I'll train them. Um, also doing the YouTube thing, make sales online. But I think that we're going to see an uptick in people wanting to learn um, just because the world's becoming more dangerous every day. So, yeah, it definitely is, man. I kind of wanted to get into that, dude. Like with that stimulus shit, you got people that are getting it, then you have people that they're not getting it, then you add in the uh, beginning of the spring, fucking a year since COVID, and you got all the the court shit on TV, man, it almost seemed like it could be a pressure cooker, man, but as far as as positive investments, like you said, man, fucking up. And when it got like some ways, bad rollers, fucking up. I got the rest of the shit in the front, like weighted vests, so what you call the thing, the resistance bands, all that type of shit. I I know it'll make some money back, man. Like, so it's gotta be positive. You got some, some guys that they, you know, they say they big into the weapons. They didn't already spend all their shit on like 50 knives. It's like, bro, you got two hands, man. What the fuck are you going to do with all of these? (laughs) Well, that's the realistic part of what you're saying too is, and I like this about your system, man, is you're so realistic. What the fuck are you going to do with a fucking plate carrier on? What the fuck are you doing with 50 knives? You never use that shit. I mean, I've lived yeah, 25 yeah, years, bro. Yeah. I've never once had to put a vet. Like, I've trained with it, but I've never once had to put a vest on and go and, like, go to, like, Iraq and kill people, you know? Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Shit, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a fucking veteran, so I don't, right. try, to, I don't try to pretend to be right. one, man. This. I think that shit's illegal. They had this <laughs> fake ass Navy Jew guy down here 
It was teaching people how to hit people with a fucking Cuba time or some shit. They put him <laughs> on the news, man. So, yeah, you yeah know. fuck those people, those uh, what is it, stolen valor people, man. Fuck that shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they should come up with something like that for martial arts, man. Like just across the board. It just it, it's probably hard to, to do it, man. But it, it's a lot of shit. If you go to any fucking shopping center, they got a black belt. It's making other people pay for their black belt while they yeah. break a, a fucking piece of uh, cardboard about fitting this goddamn cup. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. Yeah, my uh, my jujitsu instructor always laughs and he's like, "Dude, you know, there's no regulatory basis in jujitsu. There kind of is, obviously, but you know, in every art, it's got its own like regulatory mm-hmm. thing. But you can go and go to the store and buy a black belt, and no one will really know the difference." Yeah, yeah. Unless they also like earned a black belt, you know? Yeah, pretty much. From what I understand with jujitsu, man, that shit got like a lineage for real, though. Like, bro, somebody be like, oh, so you train here, then you train there. Like, damn near like a, a paper trail, man. Yeah, you know, it's like, easier to prove and disprove with that. Yeah. And everyone kind of knows that it's a small community, used to be at least a small community. Um, but, yeah, it's 52 blocks, man, is it's one of those mysterious arts, almost like ninjutsu, where nobody really knows like everything about it. But those who really know it, um, I don't feel like are teaching the full system. Is that true? I mean, somewhat part of it is. Um, and I recently just heard this saying like two months ago, like part of it, man, it is a money thing or. It's people that just fucking, for whatever reason, they never put nothing out. It was this yeah. older cat named uh, K. Sign. He had, uh, I guess he either died of old age or some shit. And fucking, um, yeah, basically when somebody died or just stopped doing some shit, they they style died with them. Yeah. And then you got, you know, like say if you, if you just any anybody just went on Google and typed in fifty two blocks, you got. Main stories is like urban legend type shit. You got the shit about some like ten foot gay guy that was was whooping people, and it's like, all right, man, they they got mug shots of a uh, fucking old cowboy outlaw. Nobody nobody has a picture of this dude, so that that's part of it. And then a lot of that shit, it just, it come from other martial arts and shit that works. Yeah, you know. Like, it, it's certain 52 moves, which I, I'll send you the link when we get off of here. Some of the moves come from fucking 1920s, 1930s boxing. Yeah. And yeah, it, that's it exactly just, what like, I thought. Like, I saw them um, standing and just, like, slipping a clothesline. And I was like, well, that's yeah. that's boxing. That's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a few moves like that. Like, it's some shit called the cakewalk they used to do, like, from the 20s to the 40s, where it'd be, like, a one-two then it looked like a hook, but then you walking away to, you know, get him your back and you're really drawing a knockout punch. Interesting. I, I'm going to do that, but I'll, I'll add a kick to it or add something new school to it. But yeah, man, um, part of, the, part of the, the reason why either styles look so different or people might reach out and somebody can't teach them, like a lot of people don't know this shit. <laughs> They're yeah. making it up as they go. I'm gonna just be real with you, man. Like this is this is a different podcast, so I'm not gonna call out anybody's name. But if you look it up, you can tell, man. They, they don't have any training footage, any sparring footage, but they talking about how great they shit is. It's like, all right, man, it, it sounds good. So I mean, it right. is what it is. Hopefully, I can get more visible with this shit. And the people that, that are, you know, doing their thing, hopefully they can continue to do it and all of the fake shit just die out. You know, I, yeah, I'll just leave it. No, I mean, that's perfect. It was well said. And I hope that fake shit kind of does die out. Um, we'll see. Fake shit tends to stick around longer than real shit because it's easier to learn uh, yeah. and it's it's more flashy and it sells better. But yeah. Man, it's um, it's been a pleasure to talk with you, Warren. I I find what you're doing very interesting. You've got a really realistic approach about this, which is 
refreshing to say the least. Um, you know, you guys at home listening, um, all you got to do is look up 52 blocks on YouTube and you'll see exactly what we're talking about, where a lot of it's, there's a lot of bullshit out there and a lot of slap boxing. (laughs) Yeah. A lot of, yeah, exactly. A lot of slap boxing, a lot of like taking just pretty much straight up boxing and naming it something else or whatever. Like, um, but if you guys are out in the ATL Atlantic air, Atlanta area, definitely get in touch. Now, Warren, how can guys get in touch? What's your Instagram? Um, what's, you know, any websites you got? So uh, right now I'm on Instagram under renegade 52 blocks. And then I'm probably going to be doing, being more active on YouTube. And that's right now it's under Warren C W A R R E N C. And other than that, I'm going to see where I'm going to take this thing, man. And good, man. In the Atlanta area, you know, can train in a park or somewhere like that. Listen, if I ever make it out that way down south myself, I'll definitely hit you up. I'd love to train a little bit and just mess around. I think it'd be a great YouTube video, too. So, yeah. cool, cool. Yeah, yeah we could do it, man. Bring some pads out. Awesome. Go over some shit. Then with a combatant's background, like, you probably know most of the moves anyway. Yeah. It's like logic moves. Yeah, add some to it, probably learn some of your shit. And yeah, that'll work. That'd be fun. That'd be a fun time, man. I'm going to be hitting the road hopefully this summer. So, yeah, definitely if I'm down south, I'll let you know. And, all right, cool, go. Um, go. Warren's links are all going to be down below. Uh, we're going to uh, probably also be doing an IG Live at some point. So if uh, you want more cool. information about 52 Blocks, guys, comment down below. Any questions you have, we'll answer in the uh, IG Live. So follow Warren. Renegade 52 Blocks. Follow me, Go to Fighting Secrets. Obviously, if you're not following that already, I don't know what you're doing, but Warren, dude, again, thanks so much for coming on, explaining a little bit more about the system, and I'll look forward to talking with you more in the future. All right, cool. That'll work. Cool. All right, guys, All right. Please remember until next time that you are your first and last line of defense, and I will see you in the next Tactical Podcast.